Welcome to the Norris Group Real Estate Podcast, a show committed to bringing you insights from thought leaders shaping the real estate industry. In each episode, we'll dive into conversations with industry experts and local insiders, all aimed at helping you thrive in an ever-changing real estate market, continuing the legacy that Bruce Norris created, sharing valuable knowledge, and empowering you on your real estate journey. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a newcomer, this is your go-to source for insider tips, market trends, and success strategies. Here's your host, Craig Evans. Okay, everybody, I am super excited. We are back for part two uh, from last week with Tony Alvarez. It is going to be great. Tony, let me ask you this. So what do you think is your biggest success, but what do you think is your biggest hurdle that you've ever had to come to overcome? Right. You want to know the biggest, the biggest thing that I had to overcome in my life? I, my life has been a series of overcoming obstacles and overcoming unwanted situations that most people would perceive them. But we were, for whatever the reason, I don't know if it's culturally or whether it's, it's in, a, in my family. I, I tend to think it's, it's a little bit of both and a lot of it culturally because Cuban, you know, we live on an island. Cuba's an island. OK, which has experienced revolutions as often as it does tornadoes, you know, I mean, hurricanes, <laughs> not tornadoes, but hurricanes. So so give me a break. You know, I mean, you you you, you do you develop a resilience and, and it's in the attitude of the people. You know what they used to do in Cuba whenever there was a, a notice of a hurricane coming? Everyone would run to the grocery store and load up. But we're not talking about toilet paper here. We're talking about beer, pork pork chops or whatever. Why? Because they're going to have a hurricane party. Okay. <laughs> they're not at the local Home Depot boarding, boarding up their windows. They're going to have a party because they know there's no way to get away from the hurricane. So you might as well party right into it. Okay. So my biggest, biggest hurdle, honest to God, I will tell you, the biggest thing I've ever had to contend with was going under the knife at, the, at a stage in my life where I had already succeeded financially. And I've got to go now. And I had, because of the condition that I had, it was a very, it's called a Bentol procedure. If anybody out there ever wants to go check it out, it is not open heart surgery for a blockage or whatever, which they do nowadays, like you get a filling. Right. It was my chances of recovering, of getting through that surgery without having some other issue or death was 50%. 50%. By, and that's from the surgeon who did it at Cedar sinai and now I got to, I have to agree to this surgery. I it didn't like I had some event that landed me in emergency room. I have to agree. I have to say, sure, I'm on, I'm on board with this because what's, what are my options? Right. I mean, I didn't want to do it, to be honest. I didn't want to go through that. And then I got to prepare everything for my family in case I don't come home. Right. This is, this is really, you know, you, you know, it's, it's, these are moments in your life where, Real estate, becoming successful in real estate, comparatively speaking, is a pimple, okay? If you're out there worried about succeeding in real estate, the the level of commitment and the level of desire required to become successful, not only at real estate, but at, but at anything, it pales in comparison to the level of surrender, that you have to reach to give yourself over to something that could take your life in that in, 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 in that in that decision. I hope I hope I'm explaining this to you guys correctly because I I don't want you to miss it. You know, no. um, so so that that to me was that really was 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 the biggest thing. But but if you know I I could say well coming from Cuba was I was five years old. You know I'm I'm with my parents and if and and, and I'm feeling. Good. I'm, you know, we're, we're out of, and why am I feeling good? Because I look at my parents when we, when we land in Miami and they're happy. My dad's in some chain link place and, but he's happy and, and he's, ha and he's happy for us. And he's working at some restaurant. First day my dad went to work, did, wash it. He didn't even know how to, he had never done manual labor. He burned his hands with the dishwasher. You know, the thing you open it, you put the rack in and you, he went to grab the dishes. He's so dumb. You know, he did, he burned his hands. He had to tape them up and then put him in gloves so that they would let him go to work the next day. Cause if they knew he burned his hands, he couldn't go to work and needed the money to feed us. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 
if we're looking for what the, what does Tony consider to be his greatest success? I, I don't know that I could actually slice my life up into little pieces like that and say, oh, I think this was the greatest success. Probably the greatest accomplishment that I ever have had has been having a son. That's bigger than anything else. You know, yeah. my, my son represents something to me I can't even put into words. I have a, I have a daughter who's, who's uh, probably the only person that can get me to do stuff. But my son was first, right? So the first child I had. But, but my daughter can get me. My wife still says, I don't understand. I ask you to go to this place with me. You say, no, not doing it. Never will. Lorena comes up here. She says, "Hey, Dad, can we go to?" I say, "Any anything you want, honey. What, 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 whatever you want." And then and they tricked me because I said she she said that to me. I said, "That's a lie. I don't do that. I'm, I know what I'm talking about." So they so my daughter comes up to me one day and she she said, "Dad, can we go do that?" I said, "Honey, let's whatever you want to do. It's fine." And they started laughing at me. Her and they're all laughing in the kitchen. I, I went in the kitchen. I said, "What what the hell is going on?" She goes, "We just we just played you, okay? You you just told us that you you, you told me you never do that." Lorena just asked you to go to that place, and I asked you before, and you did, and and and, and, it, and it was true. So, you know, those are the things that. And, that, and by the way, my, you've seen me with my daughter. We, we <laughs> daughters, daughters can do that today. <laughs> yeah. So and 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 to this day, you know, if I have a thought of my daughter in my in my head, I call her up. And she says, you know, or she, or I, I text her. She goes, I, I was, I was, I was just thinking about your dad. I was, uh, I was going to call you. I said, you know, I, I, what, what's, what's going on? And she's, and it'll be something that she's thinking about or something, you know. So we're connected like, like that, you know. So, so those are the things. I, I don't, you know, obstacles, obstacles in my life since early on have been expected. Yeah. So the, the, the level of problem. I mean, you're talking to somebody who's been through bankruptcy twice. Wow. That is how dumb Tony can be. It took me two times to perfect it. Okay. I had to go back a second time. But you got a PhD in that then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but 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 I also learned uh, and, and this is the point that I knew I didn't need to do that either time. In in, in all in, in all honesty, had I been more savvy about business at the at the time, which I wasn't, I didn't have the education, the formal education. So I I just want you to know I said I was a high school dropout. I, I went back to school to become an appraiser because I realized I needed those skills and I loved it. I loved school then. I went back with a passion. I must have a master's degree in, or a doctorate in real estate because I don't know. I just took the classes. I took every every class under the sun and I would go in there and I would tell the teacher, I said, I'm going to be your best student. I'm sitting up front. No, 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 I sit in the back thing, you know, that I used to do as a kid. No, I'm up front. I want to know him. I want to know everything. And, and, and typically people that taught real estate were actually brokers or people in the real estate business, real estate attorney, stuff like that. So I want to get to be friends with those people. I, I I drove them nuts. Okay. Some of them would even say, you know, Tony, okay, I'm here to do the class and I got a regular job, you know, just leave me the hell alone. But I would follow them around, you know. Again, I think so often people are looking for this big aha moment. And Antonio, I'm sitting here listening to you talk about life. And yeah. everything that you've gone through. And I know that there's a there's a little bit of bait to the question of saying, what's your biggest hurdle? But I mean, part of that sometimes is just life in general. I, I appreciate the answers. And that's why I love talking with you on that. So, but I've got a question I want to push through because I, I know sure. pushing, I know sometimes people are going to say, ah, and I, I want to hear there's really two questions I, I want to get answered for you uh, before we before we have to check out of here. Um you know, the greats in this business uh, of real estate and investment and really in any business, right? But but especially in what we're doing, they they have what we all want to call the it factor, right? Um, we always know there, there's that. But the reality is, Tony, you and I both, I mean, I, I own five businesses. Around. We always know there are people behind the scenes that, that give us the support when the things get hard or that, that make what we do easier, right? So, <laughs> yeah. that, that make us look good with, of who we are. Um, I guess my question is so many people see Tony Alvarez, right? Yeah. Who's the people in your background? Who's the people that in your <laughs> life that make it easier and that, that are there to, to support you and prop you up? All right. Well, look, you know, now you're hitting a, it's,
we don't <clears throat> we don't have enough time. Wow. Take your time. Yeah. Well, you know, if you <clears throat> if you're going to tell the truth about something, you're going to you, you know, you're I I'm committed to being honest with you. So cuz I do that for myself to be quite honest with you, quite frankly. It is there's no there's no other reason for it. But um it, it's Tony is just Tony is just he's just uh the the beneficiary of of a lot of people's love and affection and and caring over the years since 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 he came into being basically and you can trace this back you know um in business probably the greatest moment ever in my life was as far as a, a person that I had close to me was Sabrina Gons who she, you know she came she came into my life as a as a child an 18 19 year old who didn't know a thing about real estate and and uh, and I hired her to do all the things I didn't want to do. I was getting to the point where I had rentals and all that, and I didn't want somebody to answer the phone and deal with the nonsense. And she and I went and I pushed her. I pushed her to do things she, quite frankly, didn't want to do. She, she doesn't want a job, you know. And and uh, I made her become a notary, and I pushed her. She made me crazy doing that, and then I made her get, get a real estate. And then I learned, I, I taught her to buy and and uh, and and replace me. Honestly, I was never afraid to do that. And I and I and I I know a lot of people have challenges with that with that kind of stuff, but I was very fortunate. I couldn't after I said to Sabrina one day, you don't need to be, you can do this on your own. And then she goes, No, I can't. Yeah. I sat with her and I said, I had to trick her into it. I said, You can leave, you know, you can do this stuff. And she said, No, I can't. And I said, you know, I, I took her out to lunch one day. I said, Hey, you know, I was just had a couple of questions. I said, This this deal that we bought, you know, in this place out there and you know what last time we you know we bought this and uh, how much we make she goes we made 70 grand on that and we didn't have to fix it and by the way you didn't buy anything you said to me when i took you to that house that you saw it was a structure it wasn't even a house and you didn't want to buy it and i went ahead and bought it without your permission and you got all upset we paid thirty five thousand dollars for that house because nobody wanted it but i had studied the market and i knew that that part of the market in the Anvil valley was coming back strong and, and we bought that house and it, and, it, and it was true, right? So I said, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, I'm sorry. I said, so, okay, so what about this address? And I, I pulled the trigger on that one. Oh, no, you didn't. You didn't even pull the trigger on that. I found that deal. And then, blah, blah, blah. so by the time we get to like about the fifth one, right? <laughs> she she goes, no, you didn't, you didn't do it. And she stops and, and, I'm, and I'm just, you know, I'm just staring at her and she goes, and she wells up with tears, right? So she goes, Okay, okay, I get it. I said, that's right. From 2000, okay, Tony's responsible up to 2005. That's when, you know, we had the crash. Yep. And, and, I, and, and Bruce Norris. <laughs> if it wasn't for Bruce, Tony would have been in bankruptcy a third time. Okay. Or, or I should even say I would have probably quit a whole lot sooner than I, than I he, Bruce held my feet to the fire. I went to see him and I said, hey, I'm ready to bail and stuff like that. But Sabrina from 2000, when we went, we, we got out in 2005. I got out with, you know, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, which I never anticipated that. My goal originally was to get to $1 million in, in, in equity and have $10,000 a month income from, you know, 10 rental houses. That's all I wanted. I swear to you, that's all I wanted. I didn't want anything else. And if I would accomplish that, that would have been huge for me. So, but what happens is, you know, you get busy doing your business and you get good at it. And then you start rolling like, and then it's like you're, you're rolling down a hill, right? You just keep going and you, and you, and you speed up, you know, and, right. and, and you're just making all these decisions and all these people are coming into your life. Don Anderson, Don Anderson is probably responsible for, you know, 70% of the properties that I bought in the, in the, in the San Fernando, uh, I mean, uh, in the, in the Antelope Valley. Um, 
and, and, and the first time I went to visit him, I mean, I called him several times. I couldn't even get through to him. He was in a, he was a, you know, Fannie Mae broker who was really busy and he's not going to take my call, you know, and stuff like that. Alvarez, that's his gardener. He doesn't want to talk to me. So, <laughs> so, 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 so th these are people that over like Rocky, Rocky Vantine was my, my CPA. Bruce Norris, again, my life in business and real estate, all the major decisions that I made at one point or another, they're all linked in some way to the Norris group, Bruce Norris specifically, okay? Bruce Norris specifically, because at that point, Aaron Norris, who came in afterwards and helped us a tremendous amount, wasn't even in the in the game at that time. This is how far we're, we're, going, we're, we're going back. I ended up in Bentonville, Arkansas. I didn't even know that place existed, okay? Walmart. I mean, I knew, about, I knew about Walmart, but I didn't know about Bentonville, Arkansas. Bruce says to me, I said, what are we going to do? We got to bail. I got to go to some, and everybody's, everything's going down. He said, not everywhere. I said, what, what do you mean not everywhere? I, there's a little place called Bentonville, Arkansas. There's Walmart corporate. This, that, this, this place is very unique. It's going through some changes right now. We can put our money there. And, it, and he went on and told everyone. I told him, I, I even said to him, I said, can we keep this? Can we keep this between us until I get my own stuff out there, and then you can tell everybody else? No, sorry, I got it. I got it. He said. So he goes on. He has a class, and he tells everyone. Right, I'm on a plane to some place called Bentonville, Arkansas, and I was surprised that they had nonstop flights from LAX to Bentonville to this little one horse town. Right, and and you get up in Bentonville, and right away, this guy. I never had this experience. Welcome to Bentonville. So nice to see you. But I felt like I was talking to Clinton, you know, and and, and I get in and I, I go I, and Bruce had had built some houses there. And I I went and found a different contractor, found some lots exactly where he told me to go. I didn't want to interrupt his his flow. He already had most of his houses built anyways. I went and built I, don't know, I forget how many houses I built, 10 plus houses or something. I, I built all these houses. We wrote it out. The, the market didn't crash. It didn't go up huge amounts, but it didn't crash either. It was the best play. While I am there, I get to meet this young guy. He's taking me around, wants to introduce me to some big developer guy who, when I went and met with him, I wasn't impressed. And when we're leaving, I'm complaining. We're in the elevator and I'm complaining. I said, I got so many 1031 exchanges, man. I got to find someplace to put this money. And he said to me, oh, you need to meet Rocky Vantine. I said, Rocky Van? Who the hell? Sounds like a mobster. <laughs> and I said, he says, he says, no, he's a CPA and he specializes in 1031s. That man and I, we met. I actually introduced him to that bigger guy who he wanted to meet. And, you know, that bigger developer guy could never get into his into his place. I met him, but I also warned him. I said, I met the guy. I don't think he's what he portrays himself to be. So but him and I become fast friends. He takes over my my taxes and my and my accounting stuff. He just retired because Rocky had a heart attack and, and then he had a stroke after that. And I forced him to stay with me, even though he had a heart attack. I, I, I made him stay with me for a while. Long. Honest to goodness, because I'm terrible about that. I said, you're not leaving. You can't leave me. You're not leaving till you drop dead. You're not getting out of here alive. Anyways, <laughs> but, but he he's responsible. Rocky was, the, was, I have never been audited. Rocky did all my stuff. We did a ton of 1031 exchanges and some other creative things. And he was my good friend, and my and I just wrote him. A, I just wrote him a letter just the other day, and we spoke on the phone. Bruce Norris. If I would have never talked to Bruce, I would have never gone to Bentonville. Had I never gone to Bentonville, I would have never met the guy who became my CPA and best friend, and and saved my butt through all these years. I'm making all this money, and he he guided me and protected me. I never had an issue. I never had a problem. If you go back and you start sewing these things up one by one by one, who do I who do I think who do who's most important to me? So people like Sabrina. Sabrina has probably Sabrina's Sabrina's you know her focus. You know what she told me? She says, "I know I said, my focus is make Tony look good." <laughs> that, was, that was the banner in front of her in front of her head because she knows I'm a disaster, you know. But she, I've never been able to get rid of her. She's she could she really doesn't need to be around me. She knows how to pull from 2005. I, I we got out. We didn't get back in the market again until 2008, and we got in with a vengeance in 2008. And the market was still declining. 
but I had done the numbers and we figured we can still, we can buy, we can start buying now as the market was still tipping down, but the rents were going up. Okay. So we had this kind of an effect, right? I mean, like this. So we start buying up, but I got, I said to her, you got to take over the buying because I, I want to kind of get pulled back a little bit. From 2008 on until I came up to Oregon in 2015, Sabrina was the buyer for my company, for Evergreen Properties was the buyer, was the person responsible for pulling the trigger on every time. Every once in a while, I would do a deal, you know, because people will call me that I've known for forever. But Sabrina was known as the person that runs the show. Now, who do I owe? Sabrina, Bruce Norris, Rocky, all of these people interconnected. They're all entwined. All of these folks, you know, and, and I and I try to explain this to people one time. I said, listen, when you enter this life, it's you, you. the only thing you have to do is say, I'm open to what's going to happen or you're going to shut yourself off. That's the only decision you're going to make because it's a web of contacts and connections, a web of contacts and connections. You enter into that web and it's just, it just pulls you right in. Yep. You know, I mean, well, so. Well, let me ask you this. So in that you mentioned Bruce. Um, yeah. So let me let me ask millions you. of dollars, millions of dollars. OK, millions of dollars. All you people out there. And, and any time I get a chance, you know, Bruce would do a class or something. I would go on Facebook and say, are you people? Are you insane? You claim to be in real estate in Southern California and you're not showing up for this class. Like, what do you have to do? That's more important. This guy gave me 10 words of advice one time and he and he changed my life to, to the tune of three million bucks within a couple of years, and I didn't have to do anything but not do anything because Tony is big on doing stuff, right? So I was about to do something that would have lost me, that would have pulled that $3 million right out of my hands. Bruce said, do nothing. Do You're moving too quick. Just sit still. Go buy some other stuff if you want. But I didn't have, have to buy. That $3 million came to me as a result of just – listening to 10 words of advice and it, it was like 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 your area just it sits you know don't sell your area isn't done yet it was like 10 words i counted them it was like three hundred thousand dollars of work so <laughs> i remember that and so then when bruce i would go to bruce all the time I, I would go to my spreadsheets i never there's people that i have had come into my life that i quickly learned i don't move i don't make a decision unless i'm clearing it with them now i Granted, I don't consider myself to be the brightest bulb in the room still, but I, you know, I've learned a few things, but one of the most important things I learned is I don't know everything and, and I don't really want to know everything. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be Bruce with the thing, with the, no, with the, with the, you know, the looking up stuff. I got, hell no, I have nothing to do with that. I want to have, go have lunch with somebody, go have breakfast with somebody, you know, and I, and I never, and, that, and the lunch thing was never a big thing for me when I was working. I want, I want you to know, for those of you that are out there, I made time to meet with people, stuff like that. But I never, when I was in the, in the trenches starting out, I didn't, I didn't have lunch with a, a lot of people, stuff like that. And I think to a certain extent, you know, I may have lost a lot of business because, because of that, but, but that was, I needed to hyper-focus, you know, but well, well yep. so with, with Bruce, you know, you know, he's retired this year. That's it. Yes. It's yes. Been out. You know, and real estate is one of those things that that you can literally do forever. Right. Um, right. Not everyone wants to. Right. Bruce yeah. is saying, hey, I'm ready to start retiring. So which one are you? You know, it's uh, it's interesting that you're very astute that you land on this question uh, because I happen to be sitting by myself last night. You know, one of the things that that, that I, I I love coffee, like good coffee good coffee, you know, bold, but not necessarily heavy caffeine because my heart can't handle it anymore. But, but I love good. I got a $1,100 coffee machine. I treated myself to after I came back from Australia, by the way, Australia has the best coffee in the world. And it was influenced <laughs> by Italians, you know, that in their history. But, but anyways, so one of my customs is I have this double insulated glass cup and stuff, and I'll sit and make myself a cup of espresso or something similar to that. They call it espresso longo or something. And I'll sit and I like it sweet. And I'm black and sweet and I'll sit and I'll, and last night I was, I was doing that and I was thinking about this interview and I was thinking to myself, you know, Jesus, so many people out there, you know, for you to interview, um, Bruce has touched the lives of so many, the Norris group, you know, not only Bruce, but Aaron as well. Aaron really had an impact towards the 
towards the end uh, in, in many different ways that I never even thought about. And, and, I, and I think, you know, I'm 68 years old. I, I don't feel anywhere. I, I, don't, I don't feel like there's retirement around the corner, right? right? And the truth of the matter is this. I tried a couple of times to, quote, unquote, retire, right, to get out of it and not do whatever. And nowadays, I guess you could, I'm not, I don't even like that word retirement, to be honest with you. I don't like it. I, I'm, retire from what? I mean, yes. Okay. So you can say, I'm just going to do things differently. Well, let's get that word and, and just pull it right the hell off the table because it doesn't mean anything to me whatsoever. Now, what I have done over the years, which is really the fact of my life, is that things change, right? So, so you today you're doing this and you're making your money in real estate doing this. This is the wonderful thing about real estate. I did a presentation, by the way. I was again Aaron Norris. It was a it was a, I get a call from this guy one day. I'm, I'm naked, getting into the shower, and I wonder why I answer my phone at that moment, right? So Tony's naked, about to get in the shower. My cell phone goes off. I pick it out, and and it's this guy, and he says, "Hi, is this Tony Alvarez? Yeah, I need you to, I need you to to, to help us and, and do a presentation for him. who the hell is this?" And it turns out to be this guy that started uh, Bigger Pockets or whatever the heck it is. Now, here's the thing: I had sent them three articles to put in their in, in their thing. All three got 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 rejected, and now this guy's on the phone to me. So I'm like, "Are you kidding me? You're asking me to do?" So he says, "Yes, we need you to do a presentation." By the way. Aaron Norris gave me your phone number. He said, we have to have you there. And Bruce Norris is going to be there doing a presentation, but we want you to open the thing. And, 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 and I said, well, what do you want me to talk about? I'm thinking REOs because that's what I, you know, foreclosures and stuff. Right. He says, no, no, no. We want you to do the introduction to real estate. We want you to cover all the ways of investing in real estate, all the methods of financing real estate. And we want you. And I said, well, how much time do you got? You got an hour. <laughs> I said, I said, you know, it's obvious that you're new to this business. Right. <laughs> he said, if I had all day, I couldn't do that. He says, well, that's all you got. You, you, you got an hour, Tony. Are you willing to do it? Now, I told you about my mom's frog. What do I say to that guy? And in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, this is an impossibility. I can't do this. I said, my mouth opened and I said, no problem. Bye. I hung up. <laughs> right? I hang up the phone. I get off. Immediately, my brain goes, are you insane? You can't do this. And, and my brain starts telling me excuses as to how I can get out from under this. Just, call, just tell them you're sick. When it, when it comes, you don't just, just back out of it. Just go, But that's not going to happen. So I did that presentation. I did it in an hour. And I started with a picture of an elephant. And I said, <clears throat> here's the real estate business. I have a tough job today because it's basically a miracle you're going to watch on this stage. I'm going to cover everything about real estate in, in, in one hour. But how do you eat an elephant? And I, and I showed the next slide was a bite taken out of its back. I said, you do it one bite at a time, right? And that started the presentation. So Tony will never be, will never stop participating in the real estate business. Never. To one extent or another, because why? Because it's an integral part of something that I love. It's just like I have fruit trees all over my 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 uh, my property. I'll never stop doing certain things in my life. They're 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 the fiber of who Tony is, right? I love fruit trees. I love. I can't wait to get my place in Florida so I can have different fruits. You realize all the tropical fruits I can get in Florida? I can't get those fruits up here. Right. So I have the best of both worlds. I'll spend six months there, six months here. And I got different fruits all the time. But just a little thing. Right. So you think fruits. What's this guy talking about? <clears throat> to me, real estate business is like that. It gives me something. I love it. And I and I keep and I'm always learning new new things. I went from doing rehabs to doing this to doing that to property management to doing all of this. Each part of those things in real estate, I adore. I love the people I, uh, I work with. Up here, I didn't know anybody when I got up here. I know everybody. I have I have really good friends up here now. People that I've met as a result. Okay, the Norris Group again. I'm getting interviewed like this with Bruce Norris one, one time in Los Angeles. Some gentleman hears that recorded thing. He calls and he speaks with Aaron and says, hey, I, I, I heard Tony speaking on the, you know, getting interviewed. He mentioned he lives in Oregon now. Could you please give us his contact information? Aaron calls me. 
would you like to give me your contact information? I said, I never would. I said, hey, do it. What do we got? That man turns out to be, his father owned over 500 units up here, all free and clear. He started in business many years ago. He heard me speak and he heard some of my political views and he he you know felt simpatico with him. He says, if he's up here, we want to meet him. They invited me to speak. They have a real estate club up here. They invited me to speak. Very conservative men and they're wonderful people. One day calls me up because I, I went, I'm, I'm looking for loans. So I'm always looking, I'm interviewing banks all the time, all the time, all the time, regional banks. I'm always going around meeting everybody, introducing myself. I went to this place. I said, hey, I'm looking for a bank, you know, another, oh, what? here's my spreadsheets, whatever. Oh, oh, but you're with, uh, you're with the other bank here in town. Yeah, at Evergreen Bank. I said, yes. He says, well, we can't touch your deal. You know, you, you just, this is, you know, this is, this, we can't touch it. I said, okay, that's fine. At least I got to meet you, stuff and that. And and he's friends with the guy at the other bank and all this. Within a few days, I get a, an email that says, Tony, uh, how you doing? I hope everything's going to go. And it's from this gentleman, just from this gentleman that, that heard me on the radio. He says, would we, I'd like it as a personal favor. If I heard you went to People's Bank, would you please visit People's Bank again as a personal favor to me and see if they can help you out? So I, I'm, I'm like, I'm reading this and I'm going, this is a small town, but this is crazy. How the hell does this guy know that I went, right? So I immediately call him up. I said, how do you, Craig, how do you know? His name is, happens to be Craig also, by the way. I said, Craig, how, how do you, how do you do? He goes, well, you know, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. But, um, and, and this, this is a fine person. I want you to know, okay? Just a very, very fine man. I got to meet his father, him. They're wonderful people. And I felt his dad and I read the same, the first two books, uh, uh, Think and Grow Rich. And uh, uh, How to Make Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, his first two books. I, I read the same, but we're like 30 years apart in age, okay? And, and, re- and yet we read the same two books, okay? Because he wanted to get into real estate and all that stuff. So he says to me, would you do as a personal favor? Would you go back to the, to the bank? I said, I said, but what, 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 why do you care if I go to the... He said, Tony, look, okay. My dad was one of the guys that started that bank. <laughs> and I'm on the board of directors. <laughs> so would you please go back to the bank and see if they can't help you? <laughs> so I'm in shock now, you know, because right. up and he's never said anything like he's very he's he's a very fine person. He would never throw that kind of stuff on the table, you know, and impress anybody or anything like that. So I go back to the bank and I'm like beside myself. I walk in. I said, I'm supposed to come see you because he says, yeah, yeah. He says, come on in, sit down. The guy closes the door. He goes, I'm supposed to ask you a question. I said, what? What do you want? <laughs> I said, I said, what? What do you want? I said, what, 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 what do I want? Yeah, don't complicate this. Just tell me what you want. You wanted financing. Can you just tell me what it is you want? Now, I didn't want anything extravagant, to be very honest with you. I really wanted to get a similar deal, but I was looking for a, a new bank to work with. And I wrote down my stuff, you know, my, you know, this is construction loans that's going to convert to a permanent financing and stuff. So I wrote down my my interest rate, how much of a fee I wanted to pay. And, then, and I turned around, I handed it to him and I said, OK, this is it. And he goes, OK, you can you can leave. I'll, I'll get back to you. Now, he had my number and everything else. I leave. I drove probably the equivalent of maybe five miles. My phone gets a ping on it and he says, you got your deal. <laughs> now, now I want you to know, I didn't keep in mind. I didn't ask for anything that was all that extravagant or anything like that. They were a little bit less than what I was getting. And, and the structure of the deal was what I wanted to get. Um, but you know, I was very appreciative of that. Now, what are the odds? You tell you you live a life like like you know, we all live. Yep. What are the odds that I'm being interviewed like this? Somebody hears it up here in Oregon. They call. We become friends and this and that. Next thing I know, I go to this bank. I don't know that it's. I don't know they have anything to do with that bank. Then they're calling me, sending me an email, telling me go, and then that develops a relationship with me. By the way. They have done all my construction deals because I, I now build, you know, I've been building small things, you know, up to like 11 lots in their individual lots and they, they're duplexes and they're for elderly. I, I, I build for over 55, 65. No, most of them are in their 70s and 80s. 
uh, yep. the folks that rent, uh, that, that rent from us. That's one thing. And, and to answer your question, uh, you know, uh, directly, I'm never going to retire from real estate. I'm never going to retire from anything. Just like I don't want to retire from, to me, it's like, how, when are you going to retire from life? When they call me back, when they say, okay, hey, you're, you, we want you back. I went through that operation, which was the biggest hurdle in my life, you know, uh, as far as on a, on a personal level. On a business level, the only hurdles I have ever had in my life on a business level is um, adding something new to my business model that I had no experience in at that, at that particular time. Something, you know, going in a different direction. When I added rentals, right, I had to go through the learning curve. I went, there was a point where I had 100% Section 8 rentals, 100% in the, in the Antelope Valley. Some people thought I was nuts. And then I started getting, uh, you know, calls from people that wanted me to show them. And I trained, I trained other investors. I helped them out. I never say no to that kind of stuff. I helped this other guy that had over 300 rentals. You know, three hundred houses uh, in my in my market. He, he was, you know, you would consider them a, com a competitor. I always look at it as cooperating. I cooperate with all uh, other investors, just like up here. I got a guy that owns two thousand units. I sold him some rentals this this year. He paid me seven hundred ninety five thousand for some fourplexes that I had paid three hundred thousand dollars for three hundred twenty seven thousand dollars a couple of years before. So <clears throat> it's 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 this is for me is it's just life. You know, it's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to retire from anything that I love. Why would I do that? And, and I, and I've been in it all these years because I, I love it and it loves me back. You know, well, I, I will tell you as I'm wrapping up here, I'm going to tell you, I think one of the most interesting things I have learned today is that you're willing to take Brandon Turner's phone call in the nude about going <laughs> Is that is that his name? I would I can never remember his, his 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 name. But I want you to know the first thing I said to him is, "You got a lot of gall calling me up. You 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 turned down three. Of my, I know." He says, "I know. I apologize. I uh, we we got we thought you were some. Uh, what, what did he say to me? He was very honest. He said he said we thought you were some uh, some uh, real estate guru type. You know that I said guru type. I said did that did Aaron tell you that? He goes, no no no. Aaron's the one who straightened us out." Because we told him that we had done to, you know, that we didn't want to deal with you and stuff like that. And he said, oh, man, you made a mistake. You, that's the guy you need. And, then, and, and, and yeah, but it goes to show you, a yep. web of contacts and connections. It's a web of contacts and and, 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 and you better be nice to everybody you meet out that's there. Right. If you're starting out in this in, in this business, you better love, to, learn to love your business associates. That's the way I've explained it uh, over the years. Learn to care about the success of other people as much as your own. It, because well, if you if you miss that boat, you've missed you've missed life period. So so as you as you take your frogs with you, <laughs> where, <laughs> where 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 do folks find you coming up? Where, where where do we follow Tony Alvarez? Okay, so so here's here's the deal. I I've been very you know I've been very quiet. I I speak every once in a while. I always do this stuff kind of stuff for the Norris Group, uh, and for very good reasons. I've already uh, uh, explained. But I'm very particular about where I go otherwise, you know, speaking in public for anybody or anything like that, because it's a stamp of approval, so to speak. Right. I mean, whenever we we speak for, you know, they see you and they go, OK, hey, if they think Tony's being honest about his stuff, then they're going to that gives them credibility. So um, I have I've been invited to speak um, for a, a wonderful group. And it's it's uh, they're actually it's actually coming up uh, in February. Uh, it's Saturday, February 24th. It's in San Diego, California. So I can't wait because I love going to California. Um, um, and it's uh, it's a group that teaches veterans and first responders uh, how to invest uh, starting with nothing, right? Starting from uh, from zero. And uh, Bruce Norris is going to be there. And and there's a, and there's some other guys that are going to be there uh, as well. And this is this is run by Buddy Rushing and his wife. Yes. And and. Uh, and they have, uh, the, uh, but but here's the kicker, okay? Because I was I was speaking with them yesterday, and I'm just getting prepared because I have some I have some things I'm going to be giving away because I I just I just I just got through telling you that I came to this country, you know, basically for freedom, right? If, if I get a call that says, "Would you mind speaking in front of a group of veterans?" That's like. For me personally, I have no greater honor than that, right? 
I get to I get to go before a group of men and women that it's something I'm really looking forward to. I'm, I'm working really hard on that on that presentation because I'm gonna I'm gonna have to keep my emotions in check the whole time from the minute I get on that stage, right? So I got to take some kind of a I got to take some kind of meditation course or something before I get there, you know, deep breathing or something. But this is this is a fabulous event, and they and they have a deal with a with a with a work with with they. They're going to help you succeed. I mean, that's just their, their, and, and are you, are you ready for this? We're talking about it. And I said, well, you know, what do you guys, you know, the, what's the cost for this? Maybe I can sponsor some tickets or whatever. She says, well, you know, we're, we're pretty reasonable. We charge 75 bucks. I had just filled up the tank in my truck, right? Yep. It cost me $75. Exactly. And I remember thinking, and I even said it to her. I said, I can't believe for all the stuff that you guys are providing, it's the same as a cost of a tank of gas. I mean, that's just beyond my understanding. But they went; she went even further than that and said, well, we don't leave anybody behind. So if somebody's even having trouble with that, they need to contact us. But but 75 bucks? I'm really looking forward to this, uh, to this event. Besides that, you know, we're talking about a lot of other things. I'm trying to get do a little bit more speaking and stuff like that because I I, I want to do that. But like I said, I dealt with these questions. I was thinking about this last night. Tony's never going to quit real estate. I'm going to do more speaking. I'm going to make myself more available to for folks that that are interested in getting into the into the business. But I want you to know, keep in mind when Tony got started in this business, there were no cell phones. No computers, no internet. Yep. So if I wanted to do a deal, I had to come to you personally. If I want to talk to you face to face, you know, or I had to go home and go <laughs> and call you on the dial phone and hope it wasn't busy, you know. Because was it the rotary phone? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we still had some rotary phones, but only because we were too cheap to change them. But, uh, but, but, but it's it's. Uh, it's it's just a magnificent time for me because I'm feeling great and and everything is everything is uh, I mean I couldn't I, I I could I couldn't be in a better in a in a better position and I'm still you know what I try to do is find interesting things to do right it's not just about having another hundred Section Eight rentals or something like that that's not that's not where Tony's interest is anymore and it's a, in the in the real estate business it's always it's always a, ser a series of just like in life, you know, levels and scales, levels and scales, in it, right? So, so as you develop, you you start doing things. We just bought a lot. I've never done an RV anything, every RV spaces or anything like that. We just bought a lot here in an area that has a lot of RVs, uh, you know, RV you know parking spots and stuff like that, you know. Yep. So where it's got a house in the front, and we're developing. I'm working with the same engineer that has done the. Uh, the elderly housing thing for us on, on those duplexes. And when I say elderly housing, it's it's just we design those duplexes, one bedrooms and two bedrooms, to cater to folks that don't want stairs. Right. You know, they only, right. they only have one car. They don't need a two-car garage, and they don't want it. Right. right. Um, so, and they want to be close to stuff. We just bought another lot. We're going to do four of them, zero parking. It's right downtown in, in, in Grants Pass. You can walk everywhere. And, and the... And the people that we're renting, no, we already have a waiting list. They have no automobiles. They walk everywhere and they take the bus. They got the bus thing. They got, you know, they got the bus thing that tells them all the buses. And right, right. I mean, they come in, they come in to fill out an application and they're sharing all this information with, with Sabrina, you know, because she still handles all the management. for So interesting things. There's, there's no, you, there's, if you're getting bored in the real estate business, you're doing something wrong. Uh, guys, for everybody listening, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor to have Tony Alvarez with us today. Uh, make sure and catch up with him. If you're in San Diego, please go check Buddy and his event out. It is a great event. Uh, Tony, again, thank you so much. For everybody listening, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you very much for having me. I sincerely appreciate it. For more information on hard money loans, trustee investing, and upcoming events with the Norris Group, check out thenorrisgroup.com. For more information on passive investing through the DBL Capital Real Estate Investment Fund, please visit dblcapital.com. 
The Norris Group originates and services loans in California and Florida under the California DRE License 01219911, Florida Mortgage Lender License 1577, and NMLS License 1623669. For more information on hard money lending, go to thenorrisgroup.com and click the hard money tab.